your users if you're doing anything more. Also, what is your main intention? Do you want to make money? Then if you want to only make money, your whole plan is going to be completely different. If you want to find fulfillment and maybe make some money on the side and then make travel, then also your start and plan will be completely different. Um, yeah, there's also a lot of trust and courage and doing things without even knowing if they were going to work in the end. There's a lot of, I'm going to do this today, even though I don't feel like it. I'm going to push through, even though I don't see any benefit of doing that. And that's all about uh, reaping the benefits of the hard work afterwards. And that's why I'm here. Everybody <laughs> asks me, what are you doing here with that and alone with the bus came for four hours? It's just like, I really like what they do. <laughs>
I went through my uh, journey that I also gained one certificate from uh, Coursera for the UX, so I have the structure because I wanted to learn UX, but it was too chaotic. They have so many dimensions that I said, I need some structure. And they have a plan. I, you can even get the UX course for free if you uh, write a good essay why you want to do this. And uh, basically, you can get the free education, free certificates, just you have to ask and talk more than you do. And if you want to uh, learn more about the bureaucracy and legal it's like you are afraid of the law or taxes or anything, it's not that scary, trust me. Me, going from another country and speaking, uh, it means I speak Christian, but I'm, I'm always a stance, strangia, which I don't understand. So I, I can do it, you can do it. So it's very important just to be persistent and do your thing and believe in what you're doing. And I highly recommend you go check out Club Yore because they have lots of free workshops and lots of information on how to create a business and how to make Groups are quite helpful, but they are also biased. There are also a lot of communities that you can check out. And if you want to learn more from me and my experience, I have a newsletter called uh, Curious Again. It's on my website. You can ask me about it and you can join. The money. <laughs> this question is a um, topic for me. I would say um, there is simply a lot about the um, term soft and I think that's my type of uh, entrepreneurship because I'm not about the hustle culture and I'm not about the zeros, the six figure, five figure, I don't know about that. Honestly, I just want to do something that will make me um, feel that I have contributed to this world, seen, appreciated, and uh, enjoy the process. Like, this is my goal to be the freelancing. But I did read some books so I can change my mentality about money and think about more about how I'm going to make this passion to work and to be sustainable. And this is how I also found out through what we read about the business plan and the government has a website. So I got the digital and green uh, website for 10,000 euros. I run my business plan alone and my friend just checked the punctuation. It was good. I sent it. I got it. I got my new setup. Nothing pretty much changed except the technological things behind it. I got a Mac M3, whatever. <laughs> but the work is it, it, it became much easier because I got a camera, I got a mic, I started interviewing more people, and I just got that boost of okay, now I'm serious, I have a contract, I have to stick to the deadlines, I have to make money, and I have to make this a successful business. So what if you are a student or you're just there starting out and you don't have the money, you don't have any savings, you have no um, experience in any company, I would suggest you try a side hustle that is just paying good money. Like taking your time for money, trading that so you can save some more before you start freelancing. Um, competitions and hackathons also give some kind of crisis but depending on the area and location you are in. But about the side hustle, if you're good at something else, for example, I do teaching online on Gateway and I tell my fellow Bulgarians to practice their English. I have a full stack developer and he is also practicing his English with me. It's like $20 per hour, $15 per hour, how much you want to do. So there is a way that you can uh, gain some extra money on the side and color and you can dream about the frequency and start working on the frequency. So if you want, you can. Now, when you come to your business and how much money you're going to gain uh, with your services or product, it's really important for you to define how much is going to be your daily rate because some websites, if you're going to use websites for uh, promoting your services, they ask for daily rate, hourly rate, or per project, like what is your starting price, basically. Diversification here I put as an option, like to have your mind always open and accepting of new things and not to be like, okay, I have to stick to programming, I have to stick to programming, uh, or rewrite or whatever. There was one company that reached out to me uh, last year, um, around Christmas, about expert consultations. And I researched and read it and I was like, okay, this is legit. And they want to pay me high amount of money per hour so I can talk on the phone with somebody in America and give them uh, advice or my insights about no-code uh, tools. And I was like, 
Sure, why not? And this is how you, by doing stuff and exposing yourself to new things, you can find new opportunities. And that's why I put this little bullet point there for having in mind that there's also something else that you can do to make more money or gain more experience. Mm, yeah, there's also contract-based work that you can do for six months, one year. For example, a company wants to build the one uh, web application, but they want to contract to work with them only for one year, and then you're done with that. That's also fine. You can think about if you're ready to engage in such uh, projects as well. About saving money for all these contributions and taxes, it's just a simple calculation, basically, but it's always a good idea to uh, have that sorted. These are just some quotes that I, I really uh, believe and like. Um, asking the things you'll be given, that's the positive psychology in me and the self improvement part. And of course, the other promise and over deliver, that's the freelancer most common advice. That's basically whatever you give to the client, whatever you over deliver will make you stand out from the crowd of freelancers. Will that be your communication? Will that be the feedback that you give every time? Will that be some extra service that you want to provide to your clients? Is that going to be maybe advice to hire someone else on the team for marketing purposes or something else? What else would you bring to that client that he will be like, or she, they will be like, oh my god, this person really cares about what I'm doing and they're not here on the Time is also a very important uh, resource when it comes to freelancing, and this workbook is from the future. If you know Chris Do, do you know Chris Do? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's really a cool workbook, and you have all the days and hours spread out, and also some um, tables with motivations. And basically, makes you think about like how much I'm wasting my time right now. <laughs> what I have, what can I do uh, before? Uh, Freelancing and I realize that I spend too much time on different things, and you can really optimize uh, your time by using this workbook. But also, it will make you think about how uh, how easy and difficult it is to establish a routine, because that routine, in the end of the day, will give you a lot of uh, freedom and power to, to create more and do more. The most important lesson I learned with freelancing was learning how to say no. And professional boundaries. In terms of projects and clients, friends and family, it's really important to know uh, when when it's enough is enough, <laughs> and what, what works for you and what pays off and what it doesn't. Now, the productivity part here is a very individual thing, but I would suggest you also while you're doing what you like <coughs> passion projects when you're preparing your portfolio, I would suggest you time yourself. I didn't do that, but it's a really good thing to do. So measure the time you're spending on certain projects and how much uh, you can charge for this time spent on certain projects, basically to set an estimate. And for that I'm using Toggle, it's a free uh, tool. You can also uh, do a lot of project management with uh, Trello, and if you are terrible procrastinator and you don't seem to start doing the thing you said you're doing, be firm. <laughs> you can try to focus on it and uh, sign up uh, there. I think we have three sessions per month or week, I'm not sure. Basically, someone on the other side of the world is signing up and they're doing their, their thing, you're doing your thing, but you just, as an accountability, but you tell them, I'm going to work on this part of my project. And they are later on after the session asking you, did you do it? <laughs> so that's to make you do the work and it was quite helpful during the dark months in the, during the holiday season. <coughs> also, you will find yourself like stuck in one place at some point you're like, I'm a freelancer, I'm so linear, I'm so solo that I'm lonely. <laughs> and your environment you gets like very, how to say, um, you get fed up with it and you will not feel like you're doing or uh, being like productive. So I would suggest to go to the library, go to uh, places where other people work, and maybe even find a friend who is also starting a business. Work together, like keep each other accountable and try to uh, progress together in this, if it's possible. About the experience, you can easily gain experience only if you want to work. <laughs> That's what I said. The freelancing is not for everybody. But uh, you can do that by starting with your closest circles. I can see here that I'm already with community. So if you just ask around, maybe you'll find a project tomorrow. 
and start working on something interesting and inspiring. You can also create a passion project for something that you really like, like being traveling or EDM concerts or something. Something that can make you can make a connection with the dots and create a product or service. You can also collaborate uh, online with people, which is my favorite part, and this is how I find most of my clients. My last client was my uh, co-host of the podcast working for this. We had a podcast together. And she was like, I want to build my website and I'm finally ready. I need you to tell me that it's enough with the changes and uh, to build it in the fall. So together we did the website and this, this was my best uh, ever collaboration so far. Cold outreach is people say that it works and I never really said it out. It didn't work for me. Warm leads to hot leads is possible. Just it needs a lot of working time to happen. Solving the problem with the content is uh, also a really interesting strategy to uh, gain experience. I do sometimes tutorials based on my Instagram followers asking me, is this possible that you did on your website with Webflow, but to recreate it in Vix? And I was like, yeah, let me do a tutorial for you. And later on, they send me a message, I'm ready for my website to be done. Are you free? Like, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, also, you can try out some of the freelance platforms that have listed here based on the and uh, preferences in the industry. There are some websites for online, like remote or paid. But if you look for more, you will find more, basically. The volunteering is really good, and I got the idea for the video with testimonials yesterday. Because if you don't need money, you can get a written or video testimonial for how good work you have done as a freelancer, and then you can put it in your portfolio. The visibility is probably one of the most important parts of about freelancing the time here. <laughs> so you can do a lot by just showing up. Just doing what you do in front of people, talking about what you're doing, sharing with others, and constantly improving and learning from others. So being in the community can be quite a valuable resource for your starting freelancing career. Also very important to uh, stay updated and connected with others, checking your numbers, and also all the time um, update your knowledge about your technology, your circles, and maybe also when it comes to realizing the laws and what's new and what's changing. The most important part of visibility, I would say, probably is the collaboration that comes from that. Because by talking to people, you can get to work for uh, someone else or with someone else on different projects. And whenever you need help, you can easily find someone to reach out to events or to ask a question. For example, I have this boy that we always have a coffee chat once a week, and she's like, This client, I cannot with them, I cannot figure out what they want. We talk it out. And in the end of the day, it's nothing so complicated that we thought it was. So, someone who has been through it can easily give you the support that you need and the advice that you need. So, don't get too isolated when you start to work. That's, uh, that's my advice. And I recommend you nurture the relationships. I think that's one of the last slides. It's really important to be good with people. You can be introverted, but it's good to have good connections and to maintain relationships with people. And I think that's the most important factor of freelancing. If they like you, they will like you. If they don't, they will not. And basically, based on that, you can find your type your clients and uh, your industry, your niche. One of our guests on the podcast said, my clients are ambitious entrepreneurs. And that's for niche. Local ambitious entrepreneurs. Those are the people that she makes SEO strategies for and she works with. So through this, you will uh, figure out who you want to work with and the whole journey will make much more sense. Thank you. When you have the relationship, don't forget to check in on your clients and your uh, peers. Because sometimes we forget to do that, we stay a little bit, we feel maybe a little bit too overwhelmed at some point by constant messaging and chatting and whatnot. But with those people that are important for your business, make sure that you stay on top of mind for them and make sure you reach out. Having a win win mindset and thinking about expanding and growing your business, I think, should I even mention it? <laughs> it, it, it has to be positive uh, mindset. You have to have it. You have to think in that way in order to grow. Otherwise, I don't think it, it, it will be uh, it will be over. I 
for work sometimes. But if I have clients, I don't do my uh, That's why it's important that when you have an idea, you write it down, you work on it because it's part of the project is gone. Yeah. And then you cannot touch it. It's not the same thing. So as soon as you have an idea about something, write it down and start recording on it while you have the time. And then when I have clients, I only focus on my clients, and here and there, post something. So the priority is always clients work. But when I don't have clients, it's just gone. Because both it's work basically. Yeah. So about pricing, do you do it hourly for a project? Everything. Or what? Everything. <laughs> like, whatever. So you decide on the clients. Then. Yes, yes. I do pricing now fifty dollars per hour for the web design and okay. development. But if I want to work for a project, then we negotiate about the project. If you want consultation, then it's a little bit higher, like hundred and eighty and more. So it depends on the project and the scope and what they want. You work in the pool? Yeah, the pool is a few years with the Because I know how to code, that's the thing. I learned in university all the languages and I know how to code, I have to be game. I know this, but it's not what I love. I love the big UX and the no code. So if I need to code, I can do a little bit of code. Any other questions? You said you co host a podcast, right? Yes. How much time does it take you to organize the whole thing? One hour planning, one hour shooting. Really? Yes. Is it video and audio or just? Yeah, have video and audio and my co-host. We separate the daily tasks. For the promotion, she does the Instagram, I do the YouTube. For the recording, it is my uh, guest. That is when you have guests. It is my guest, I prepare the guest for the podcast. If it is her guest, she prepares the guest for the podcast. We put the note and then we shoot for one hour. And then I edit it and then she just chops the clips. Have you ever noticed that you got work from the podcast as a result of having a podcast? Is, does it increase your visibility? Mm, not for now. Nobody has mentioned that they found us through the podcast, mm -hmm. but it does um, increase our credibility mm -hmm. that we know what we're talking about. Yeah. And I also have my podcast on my own YouTube channel and I talk with the professionals and learn from them mm -hmm. and their experience and how they started and if they're working as a freelancer or a I think all in all, podcasting is good just for learning purposes and gaining that credibility because other podcast posts say, it's like, oh my god, you did this interview, it was so good, I listened to the whole thing, I learned so much, and I'm like, oh, okay, you know what you're doing. <laughs> so, yeah. How many hours per day spend uh, doing you know, content or working? Uh, well, for example, now when I don't have clients, now that I don't have clients work, I didn't, I didn't do any content except to me now. <laughs> but uh, it, it really depends. It depends, yeah. For my previous client, my uh, colleague, I did 35 hours for her and just as much content. Yeah. But also scheduling and planning ahead is important. That's what I said when you have an idea, do it and put it in the drafts. And then just publish. Whatever works for you, make some kind of a system that works for you. They say one day film, one day they edit, and then one day publish. I, I haven't found a sweet spot yet, but whenever I do, I try to keep that structure to film it on separate days and then schedule on different days. It's a lot of things. Did you manage to travel? Did you say that you didn't want to travel? Yes, yes. I went to England. I went to London and to Windsor, I went to Greece to visit my friend, I'm going to Malaga in June, so we been so <laughs> Yeah. You usually create content on the go or you kind of have a back on work and then you I don't I don't have my uh, notebook with me but I have lots of ideas. <laughs> but I like it on the go, honestly, because it works best for me and when I'm inspired, I have the caption, I have the image, I have the yeah. I really like also to pull out from the conversation with clients and colleagues and then turn on my uh, lens because here in the still an artist, there is a reason a lot of artists say like there's no original idea, relax. You can see yeah. from other people and just do it your own. So that was my favorite part of the book and I'm really trying to uh, work on that. Not to put, uh, because for the visibility there was one colleague that he didn't post any Yeah, like, 
How many readers? Readers. Thank you. 